What's going on, people? It's your man, the YB, back once again. So, it's all been kicking off right now between Terrod, sorry, Terence, the Anuaki, Anunaki, Anuaki, whatever you want to call it, man. Some cat <laughs> corrected me in the comments. So, An Nu, An An Nunaki, whatever you man, one of the name ones, the alien cats, the alien founders, the alien father them. Crawford. Terence, the alien father them. Crawford and Errol who got got Spence yeah so Errol posted a video headed to Vegas I want the winner Azu versus Fandora again I felt that this was out of pocket yeah you know Crawford WBO mandatory you know what he fixing to do you know that was already your ass right that was his ass Crawford listen Spence listen You've already entangled with Terence Crawford. And the outcome was, that was your ass. He got it. Yeah? He was got. 100%. All silly looking. All silly looking. And yeah, I respect the way Errol Spence went out. He went out fighting to the end. Yeah? He can. He will be, sorry. He is one of the few men who can look down from Valhalla and speculate. What you can't do, though... Is try and get in the mix with your spiritual father. Yeah? You have, you must, the rules say, the boxing gods ordain, you must stay in pocket with your father. And that is Terence Crawford. He's your daddy right now. Yeah? And this is out of pocket. Because you ain't heading to Vegas to do nothing. Because if Crawford was there, you best believe it. Do you understand? What are you going to do? Yeah? He punched you up three different ways to Sunday, for sure. He'd get you on the Saturday before and the Monday after in some other way, some interdimensional way, yeah? Free, listen, I told you, three ways to Sunday, people. That means Saturday and Monday and an interdimensional one where you just pop in back on the Sunday. You understand that one, people? All the different ways. That would end up being your ass, Spence. So just stop, stop playing with it. You ain't the big fish. You've been cooked. Crawford told you. I thought the fight was 50-50-ish. Tell a lie. I, I was back in Crawford, 60-40. I didn't think he was going to wash it like that, though. I ain't going to lie. I thought it was going to be points. I thought both men were going to be able to endure. And it ended up being a one-sided whooping. Yeah? Literally. Avanesian did a better job. Bottom line. Avanesian caused... Did he cause issues? No. But he was in there. He was busy. You do nothing. Yeah? Too busy on the floor, which is fine. I respect it. But stay in your lane, Right? Stay in pocket. Because right now, if we were in prison, Errol Spence, not my opinions, the facts, Errol Spence would be walking behind Terence Crawford holding his pocket. That's why you got to stay in it. You understand that? Stay in pocket is the focus Errol Spence needs to has when it, have when it comes to Terence Crawford. Just stay in there. Yeah, because you could, people, you had the rematch clause and you didn't want to do nothing. So you must stay in pocket, right? Yeah? You try and jump out and get on your puff daddy all in the video. Ain't no one asked you to do that. In fact, you didn't even ask to do that. Fair enough, yeah? If Errol Spence had to come on the video and said, Hey, never mind Zoo Fundora. I don't know where Crawford think he run into. I want, I want him back. Yeah? You could have said that. Instead, you try to be slick with it. Ooh. I'm going to duck the rematch and then try to be, play big dog. No, no, no. It don't work like that. You must wind your neck in and be respectful to your elders. Yeah? Terence Crawford is grown folk to you, Errol. I didn't make it that way. You could have, listen, you could have ended up smoking Crawford. And the same would have been applied to you. Yeah? I ain't here judging. I ain't here picking favourites. Yeah? Anyway. So Errol Spence jumped in the cart. He talked too much. And then Terence Crawford fires back somewhere. Where is it? Um... Uh, we going back to Dallas. Anyway, so uh, Terence Crawford tagged Errol Spence and said, Sorry, buddy, you got to wait in line, sir. That cat's pissing me off. One more time. One more time that cat's going to get it for sure. Mm. Animals, man. Piss me off. Anyway, what was I saying? 
Um, where was I? Listen. Terence Crawford said, Sorry, buddy. You gotta wait in line, sir. Errol Spence replies, I don't know, champ. I don't do lines. This guy lost his this guy lost his shit, people. Yeah? He did not just lose a fight. He lost his shit. He ain't with it. He talking like he done something. <laughs> he talking like I don't know what I don't know how he talk. He talking like it was a close fight and then Crawford didn't want the rematch. And Errol Spence is saying, Listen, I ain't waiting in line. You didn't want to smoke. <laughs> you know, even if let's say Errol Spence lost a close fight, maybe he can say I ain't doing lines and it was political and whatever else, but this situation he finds himself in, he, he doing way too much. I don't know, champ. I don't do lines. You know, listen, Errol, you was the one caught 100 mile an hour in the Ferrari. You best believe you was on the lines, right? Let's not cap it, people. He wasn't just drunk. He probably, don't get me wrong, he certainly had 2-2 whiskey, 2-2 JD, 2-2 Henny, but that wasn't all he had. Yeah, he would geek. Listen, if people, if you're drunk, yeah, if you're spark drunk, you ain't getting behind the wheel. You won't make it there. I've been there myself. I've been spark drunk before. You ain't driving nothing because you're just out of it. You wake up the next day, one of them. How you are able to operate is if you're henny wasted and you have indeed been doing lines. Yeah, it tightens you back up. Like he thought he was ready for the Ferrari. In fact, he was geeked. He's like buzzing for the Ferrari. Oops. He would twist up now. So he said that, and then Terence Crawford, and Terence Crawford, <clears throat> you lost, sir. You've got to work your way back up. And he's listen, people. Terence Crawford being super respectful with it right now. Yeah, he being how I'd, I listen. Terence Crawford is the man I'd like to be as a father. Yeah, and he treating Errol Spence. Listen, Terence Crawford's got what I don't know six, seven, eight, nine, five kids. Errol Spence is the new, the next one. Yeah, when you've got that many children, you learn how to kind of, what's the word, to distribute your paternal duties, right? So Terence Crawford, he'd been distributing. He'd be going to all his kids' and um, all his kids' football games, all his kids' basketball games, all his kids' wrestling games. He'd be doing that. So he know how to distribute his paternal skills. So that's what you're doing here with Errol Spence, yeah? Think about it. What would a father say? You just got whooped. Yeah, a father would say, hey, you lost, kid. You're going to have to work your way back up. Right? Firm and but fair. Yeah? What he should be doing, if Terence Crawford wasn't so paternal with his new son, Errol Spence, he could go, he could go mad, right? Hey, I punched you six ways to Sunday. As do I be explained. Sorry, three ways to Sunday. Yeah? You're talking too much. You need to stay in pocket. If I come over to there, Houston, New York, wherever he's from, he's one of them ones, you know, that one there. Errol Spence, we don't know where he's from. He say he's from Houston, he say he's from New York, we don't know. Wherever you're from, I'll pull up to both places. I'll check you out, I'll run you out of New York, and I'll run you out of Houston as well. Oops. That's what he should be saying. But he's paternal, people. He's a paternal, um, he's a paternal, what's the word? He's a paternal, hmm. You know what I mean? He just, it just oozes out of Terence. He got it in boatloads. He'd been maternal, paternal, sorry. Yeah? So, listen. As it happens, this is all kind of irrelevant because Fandora and Zoo are going to fight a rematch, which I believe is the best outcome. I wanted, ideally, Tim Zoo to win and then Crawford to fight Tim Zoo. I do feel a bit... Do I feel sorry for Crawford? Of course I feel sorry for Crawford. I want Crawford to... He wants Canelo... It was only a month ago he was saying, I want Canela, Canela, Canela. Yeah? It's fixing to be Captop's ass next. The big fish and then the big carrot. That's what Terence Crawford said. Yeah? I already smoked the big fish and I'm fixing to dip the big carrot in hummus. Yeah? Both of them. Crawford said this, people. He said, Errol Spence, we be frying that fish in that Omaha. I don't know what they do in Omaha, but whatever they be doing, they be spicing that fish up. We be frying that fish. Oops. Terence Crawford, he's a fisherman. He actually genuinely fishes. Yeah, he reeled that big fish in and fish it. So you best believe Terence Crawford dipping a big old orange carrot in some hummus ain't going to be a thing. Yeah? Do you know, do you appreciate the work it takes to sit there fishing and reeling in a big fish like Errol Spence? It takes a long ass time. Yeah? Dipping a carrot in hummus ain't really that much of an ordeal 
But yeah, let me know your thoughts, people. Smash the like button, subscribe, and let of the bow 100%, no doubt. In fact, no, let me talk about where Crawford goes from here. Where does Crawford go from here? Man, hmm. He just can't seem to get no luck. Couldn't, look at the first four rounds. Couldn't Tim Zhu just won the fight? Not got cursed. It, it, it irritated, man. It's not like, fair enough yet, if Fundora looked fire, and we could say, well, Fundora might have won anyway, but the fact Tim Zhu was winning the fight until the, the cut happened, it's irritating. But where does Crawford go now, legitimately? I, I'm, I'm almost lost for words here. Jamel Charlo? We know Crawford and Jamel have beef. Jamel just got smoked by Carrot Top. So, in fact, that is the play. Jamel. Jamel has most of the belts still. So Terence can collect all them belts. Well, certainly a few. I think Jamel's got at least one. Let's have a look. Well, we know Tim Zoo. Tim Zoo and Fandora had two now. WBC and WBO. I'm just guessing here. I assume Jamel's got some. Crawford and Jamel have beef. So it follows nicely in my mind. Go smoke on that. Jamel. Especially if you can knock Jamel out. Yeah, because Carrot Top couldn't. So that starts to build a narrative. Smoke Jamel at 154. And then I really believe, I'd love to see, it won't happen, but I'd love to see some Saudi guy. You know how they say these Saudi guys love boxing? Some Saudi guy needs to. If Terence Crawford beats Jamel and or Tim Zhu, assuming Tim Zhu wins the Fondora fight, I want to see Triple G back at 160. Yeah? I don't know, maybe I'm just gas and a fanboy, but I think... Crawford can stop Triple G, man. Especially at this age. Yeah? I think Crawford can do something. And Crawford ain't that young. Crawford will be like 38 by then. So it's not like... Let's see how old Triple G is. G, 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 age. But yeah, these Saudi guys, they're alleged that, oh, we love boxing. So he's not almost 42. Um, Crawford age. He's almost 42. But these Saudi guys, oh, we love, we love boxing. Well, if you really love boxing, yeah... Get Triple G back for Crawford at 160. That's what they should do. That is really up. Of all the fights out there, even Fury and Usyk, for me, I mean, I just, I just think Crawford the real deal. I think Crawford is the best fighter of all time. I just think he is. People talk about Usyk. Usyk can't punch people. Oops. Crawford's sparking dudes out at 147. Prime dudes, undefeated dudes, the whole division. Yeah? Heavyweights ain't doing that. And he's not just a brawler who gets aggressive. He can do it all. He can fight. He can dig deep. Well, we haven't necessarily seen that because of his skill, but I think it's in there. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think he's got the dog in him. I've seen him switch up with Sean Porter when Bomac said the fight was close. So these Saudi guys have got all this money, man. Honestly, if I could pick a fight now, or if I could see Crawford versus Triple G and Crawford versus Canelo, I'd take them two fights over any two fights. I'd take them over... Um, AJ and Fury or Usyk and Fury I just would because that is legendary and I believe he'd beat both of them I think he could knock Triple G out I don't think he'll knock out Carrot Top Carrot Top's Triple G's a bit old I've seen him get caught and obviously he's 42 now Carrot Top's a bit too young and a bit too a bit too fresh to be stopped but who knows Triple G in that third fight was coming back strong if Carrot Top gets tired and Crawford on him, but I think Crawford would be, he'd smart his way through that fight. I think he'd, if, if a bit like Bivol. Yeah, Bivol could have applied pressure on Carrot Top. But when you're in there with Carrot Top, just winning is a big feat. It's not like he's chinny. So it's not almost worth the risk, especially it wouldn't be worth the risk for Crawford. Coming from 135 to 168, there'd be no upside there. Well, it would be, obviously, if you stop Carrot Top, then that's just madness. But the win would be groundbreaking enough to essentially have gone from 135 to be undisputed in every weight division which I believe Crawford more or less has there was no one knocking about 135 140 he already did 147 he did 160 who's there Triple G would still probably have a belt at 160 truth be known and then 168 Canelo we've never seen anything like that now, I'm not someone trying to push Crawford. Crawford wants this as well. That's important, people. If Crawford was sitting back and saying, yeah, I'm happy at 154, complete different story. But a man of that talent deserves to test his luck. Yeah, it's not like Carrot Top wasn't happy fighting Jamel Charlo. 
Yeah, why are you so happy? Oh, he's too small. Well, you didn't have a problem fighting Charlo, though. That's my beef here. Yeah? If you've got a problem with small dudes, don't fight them. And fight Benavides. Oh, he's too big. You scary-ass carrot top looking ass dude. I, get, I, ain't, I ain't trying to hear no more from Carrot Top. I like him as a fighter. He's What he does in the ring, I like. When he's not losing. Yeah? If Carrot Top can punch someone up, he good. He great. He look wicked with it. Outside of that, I don't rate him. But punching someone up, I like watching it. I like seeing him hit someone once. I like seeing him hit someone once. And they're like, they stay hit for 12 rounds. They're like this. He's bugging with it. Like, whoa. Whoa, and these are these are people, these are hardened boxers, yeah. Callum Smith, world champion. Um, Callum Smith, Jamel, these are hard guys. They've been boxing. These aren't YouTubers who don't know what it's like to be hit from a boxer. They get they get hit off carrot top, and they're like, oh my god, I've never felt this way before, yeah. Now maybe Crawford goes in there and gets hit once, and he's the same. I want to see it though. It's the fight to see. Anyway. Let me know your thoughts, people. Smash the like button, subscribe, and lick up the bell 100%, no doubt.